River State Governor Nyesom Wike has explained that his administration will not leave any project it started for the next administration to complete. According to him, the funds for any project is always available before the government and backs on it. The governor mentioned this while flagging off the construction, reconstruction of LMA Afam and Oibu market roads in the state. This 11.35 kilometre LMA Afam road of LMA local government area has been a source of nightmare for the people, not just due to its deplorable state, but also due to the activities of criminals who take advantage of the poor state of the road to rob road users. That is why these men, women and youths are gathering for what is for them a big day the flag off of its reconstruction. This road provided the easiest route because between this road to Oyibo is under 10 minutes. And you know from Oyibo you can access Aba and the rest of the eastern states. So this is a major gift to not only Leme people, I should say, to the Ogoni nationality and even the entire state and the country. The state governor arrives for the event. And straight away, he moves to the main reason for coming before addressing the crowd. I have come because you have fulfilled your own promise of giving up the mandate to contribute to the development of this state. Having fulfilled your own promise is our own turn to fulfill our own uh, promise. And we have come today to fulfill that promise which we made to you before we came into office. The situation is no different in Oyibo Market Road as it has remained in a deplorable state for the past 25 years, bringing the governor and his team to the area the following day. For those who have been able to travel through this road, they will agree with me that it's in a frightening state of disrepair. To that extent, Your Excellency, you are here today to flag off the reconstruction of the market road in Oji. The governor is also here to flag off its reconstruction. In terms of revenue base, Oyibo is key to the economy of River State. And therefore, and therefore, you require the attention of River State government, like any other local government, requires the attention of River State government. Both road projects are expected to be delivered in exactly nine months. Emmanuel Irin, Channel Television News. Ahead of the 2019 general elections, young people in the southern part of the country are being encouraged to play active roles in the country's political system in order to experience the wind of change they so desire. That was the crux of the discussions at the 2018 Southern Young Leaders Conference for Political and Economic Consciousness in Enugu, organized by the Nigerian Young Professionals Forum. Speakers at the conference are also asking eligible youth to ensure that they register for the elections and get their permanent photo cards. These are young professionals from the southern region of the country. They are here to share their thoughts on how to awaken the political and economic consciousness in the younger generation, particularly those from the southern region. The convener of the group sets the tone for the event, bemoaning the place of the youth in Nigerian politics. We want a, a situation where all the young leaders within southern Nigeria will strategically come up with a document of youth inclusion, youth participation, on how we are also going to you know, participate in a modern and emerging democracy that we have in our country today. Other guest speakers at the event also see the need for the youth to wake up and change the paradigm by taking part in the continuous voters' registration and join in making constructive criticism. You have a stake in the project called Nigeria. It affects every one of us. 
So you don't have voters card. You're not interested in joining a political party. We must take take up the the burden that is resting on our shoulders, and that is by getting serious and the decision to get fully involved. For some others, for a new Nigeria to be birthed, there's a need for the youth to seek mentorship and be guided by the good leaders. You and I, in 2019, can begin to, or before 2019, can begin to shape the narrative. If one or two persons begin to take their decision, influenced by or induced by finances, imagine others in their different clients taking those decisions induced by money, we will return back to where we are. Nigeria can be greater than this. The high point of the conference is the unveiling of the movement titled New Nigeria 2019, a campaign which they believe will not only bring the desired change, but ensure synergy among young people. More stories now. Educational development in Kano State has been taken to a higher level with the commissioning of the Dangote Business School situated at the Bayero University, Kano. The school was established by the Dangote Foundation to offer postgraduate diplomas and master's degrees on business administration and other related courses. The Dangote Business School, dedicated to the president of Dangote Group, Al Haji Aliko Dangote, first of its kind in northern Nigeria. <laughs> It comes as a boost to the Nigerian education sector, the inauguration of the Dangote Business School in the Bayero University, Kano. The first business school in northern Nigeria. The institution is expected to train Africa's future business leaders as part of the legacy of the continent's richest man and business mogul. I also see this business school playing a role in accelerating the economic integration of our continent. Professor Murtala Sagangi, the, uh, the other management staff, faculty, and students of Dangote Business uh, uh, School in BUK. This is the charge I'm actually giving to you today. Over one billion naira is said to have been spent in the construction of this edifice which is equipped with state-of-the-art educational facilities. For the Emir of Kano, Mohamed Sinusi II, the Dangote Business School is a welcome development. He calls on others to emulate the Dangote Foundation. The government and the public sector have been the ones who educated a population. They can make an environment for wealthy individuals wealthy Nigerians, wealthy, wealthy individuals of Kano, investing in education. That is how you make education. The Amir's thought is also shared by the Kano state government. On behalf of His Excellency, the Governor of Kano, Dr. Abdani Mazenduji Khadim al Islam, most sincerely to thank Al Haji Ali Kutangwati for what he has been doing to humanity, but particularly to the people of Kano. In the meantime, registration for postgraduate diploma and master's degree programs in the newly established Dangote Business School have already commenced for the year 2017 and 2018 academic year. Idris Jubrin, Channels Television News. Efforts by local government areas in Niger State to improve the lives of the people at the grassroots may have been boosted with a grant of 750 million naira by the state government. The intervention fund, according to Governor Saini Benlo, is for the provision of portable water, renovation of schools, as well as improved health care facilities. The governor said this when he paid a visit to the Emir of Mina, Dr. Umar Farouk Bahogo, at his palace as part of a statewide tour. We have seen a lot of uh, problems, a lot of issues. A lot of infrastructural decay, a lot of, uh, uh, I, I don't even know, but everything is bad. Schools, hospitals, primary health care, roads, access roads. So, uh, Niger being a very large state will require a lot of money to fill these uh, infrastructural gaps. However, we have, uh, we have uh, put some of these um, uh, uh, 
problems in the 2018 budget and um, that was why we called it the people's budget. What we did based as outcome of the, of the tour, we, we identified um, uh, some projects that needed to be done in some of those local governments. We cannot do all, but um, we'll try to address some of the major ones. Time now for business news on the news at 10. Let's quickly shift those gears with Anne Waudo. Thanks a lot, Gimba, and welcome to Business News. President Mohamed Buhari is expected to commission Nigeria's focused laboratories for the implementation of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan on March the 12th, 2018. Focus labs are a convergence of potential investors and policymakers for economic development. The Minister of Budget and National Planning, Senator Odoma Odoma, also explains how this initiative will benefit Nigerians. We are going to conduct the focus labs initially three selected areas and which reflect the priorities of the ERGP. In agriculture and transportation, manufacturing and processing, and power and gas. So at the lab, we will focus on delivering quick and fast results. We will identify actionable projects, remove the roadblocks, and develop an enabling framework for the sector. The specific outcomes of the labs include identifying the projects which will increase investments and jobs. So when we are looking at priority projects, we'll look at the level of investment, but we'll also look at the number of jobs that that investment will create. Because we have a target of 15 million new jobs by 2020. As plans to bring the Ajokuta Steel Company back to life continue, the federal government wants to engage professionals to handle it. The Minister of Solid Minerals, Dr. Kayode Fayemi, says proposals have already been received from local and international investors. We need to get professionals to help us with the process. So many people are coming to us, showing interest, the Russians who were originally involved in it, the Chinese, the Ukrainians, the Belarusians, even some Nigerian concerns want to take over Agile Kuta. And the issue for us is simple. We do not mind anyone taking it over, but you must demonstrate to us not just financial capacity, but also technical capacity and ability to make sure that you put everything in a package that is independently verifiable to professional transaction advisors. We do not think it is in the place of the Nigerian government to continue to sink money into a bottomless pit. Uh, and that's what it has proven to be. We've spent anywhere between seven to $10 billion on these steel plants, depending on which estimate you're looking at. And we've come to uh, a painful but honest realization that this should not be run as a public concern. Let's find out how the Nigerian stock market ended the week. The five trading sessions ended the week positive by a moderate 0.72% increase in the all-share index, while the equities capitalization rose by 0.82%. But apart from the banking sector, four other major sectors of the market closed the week in the green, which also lifted the market from the sell-off recorded within the week. A total of 2.17 billion shares worth over 39 billion Nara changed hands in 24,657 transactions. While the top three contributors to the overall volume and value are FCMB, Transcore, and Cement Company of Northern Nigeria. In the meantime, traders and analysts say they believe that a more positive outlook for the equities market will happen on the back of strengthening macroeconomic fundamentals and positive corporate earnings releases. 
That's business news for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Wawadu. It's back to you, Gimba. Still ahead on the news at 10, video assistant referee VARs to be used at this year's World Cup in Russia after the International Football Association board voted to approve the technology. That's the sports news. Stay with us.